Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel that takes on narcissism. It's my hope that what you hear on this channel will help you cope with these relationships and better be able to navigate the difficult territory of these difficult relationships. So in, we've been doing a series that talks about the family roles people have, golden child, scapegoat, and all of that, and talks about what happens to people in these roles. So today we're gonna to talk about what happens to the golden child. Now, this series is, you know, we've talked about like what each of these roles is, and I think you have a pretty good handle on it, and many of you are clear on what role or roles you occupied in your family. But a lot of people wonder, what does this set me up for? What, what, could, this ha what could happen for me? Or alternately, I'm raising kids, I have a narcissistic co-parent, and I can see my child taking on these roles. What are some of the, what are some of the pathways that are more likely? Now, as we work through what happens to people who hold the various family roles, the long-term story for this role of the golden child is actually more complicated than you might think. First, let's talk about the golden child just as a review to ensure that we're all on the same page. The golden child is exactly what it sounds like. The favored child, the one who actually is the favorite child of the narcissistic parent, who gets things that typically the other children, their siblings and the family system couldn't even imagine getting. Validation, praise, time, attention, and resources. The golden child is the golden child, typically for reasons that reflect the narcissistic parent's needs. Sometimes the golden child is more attractive to or resembles the narcissistic parent. It may be that they're outstanding in school, particularly obedient or well-behaved, or is the gender that the parent prefers. For example, a narcissistic father wanting a male child. They may be an excellent athlete or succeeds at some activity that matters to the parent perhaps as a musician or a dancer or as a chess player or a soccer player or a computer whiz. The golden child is an extension of the narcissistic parent and is also in that way a fantastic source of narcissistic supply. Either the narcissistic parent is soaking up the praise that the world may be issuing to the golden child or the narcissistic parent believes that the, that the child is a reflection of them as a parent. The difference in treatment and regard that the golden child experiences relative to other siblings in the family system and even their other parent is usually pretty significant. For as examples, the golden child, for example, may get to go to private schools or better schools than their siblings would. The golden child may get their own bedroom the siblings won't. The golden child may get brand new clothes. Other kids in the family may get hand-me-downs or less high quality clothing. The parent will show up to the golden child's performances or games or anything, and they won't show up for the other children. The golden child will be picked for special days with the narcissistic parent, or just even be the one who's selected to go on errands or to the grocery store, or just be the chosen one and be the one who's sort of specially anointed by that narcissistic parent. It sure seems like an easy start in life, right? So, well, let's talk about what actually happens to these golden children, because there's a couple of different pathways and they can actually be quite different. So let's get some of the bad stuff out of the way first, okay? Not surprisingly, the golden children, more than any other type, are at risk for becoming world-class entitled jerks or, yeah, you guessed it, quite narcissistic themselves. The overindulgence, their being spoiled, always getting their way, and being coddled and over-attended to, over to by the narcissistic parent for a lifetime can result in a very entitled, arrogant, kind of mean to their siblings, grandiose and completely dysregulated adult. Either they expect the other people in the world 
to keep treating them like their narcissistic parent treats them, or they internalize that message that they are just so special that they don't have to have any tolerance for a moment where they're anything but special. At that point, then it's all the golden rules of narcissism in play. It doesn't really change, you can never win, etc. You know the drill. When the golden child turns into an adult narcissist, they are typically going to be more often the grandiose narcissist than anything else. And then we know the rest of the story if they're narcissistic. But there's another rather difficult side for the path that the golden child or golden children may find themselves on. And that could sometimes be tremendous guilt. If a golden child temperamentally comes into the world as a nice child, a child that has empathy and a decent heart, they will sense the differential treatment they're receiving and they may actually feel very guilty about it, even at a very young age. They may keep trying to draw their other siblings in to get the special things that they get or guide the narcissistic parent who favors them to also see the virtues in their other parent or in their siblings. It's as though that that golden child is placed in the uncomfortable role of being some sort of a special envoy who has special access to the narcissistic parent and they think maybe this parent who just is all about me will listen to me. It's a really unfair position to put any child in and it gets really painful at that point because the narcissistic parent often ain't gonna buy it. They'll say things like, come on now, do we really want to bring your brother in law, your brother along on this errand? He's going to slow us down and he's such a pain in the ass. Some golden children will really sit with the sting of that and feel that guilt that actually means that being the chosen child is actually really uncomfortable and can lead them to feel estranged and isolated from their siblings and other family members who absolutely are not happy about how the golden child is receiving such special treatment. Now, these golden children in a childhood and even adulthood may try to distance from the narcissistic parent. That, interestingly, gets quite tricky because then the narcissistic parent will treat the golden child with the same rage that they would anyone who abandons them or doesn't validate them. Into adulthood, these golden children may end up quite anxious, a bit grossed out by being affiliated with the narcissistic parent, and may try to spend their lives trying to make amends for what happened during childhood. There may be a lot of guilt because they can see what the narcissistic parent's treatment did to their other siblings, especially to any siblings that might have been in the role of a scapegoat. And for the golden child, that can actually result in feelings of shame and self-devaluation. I mean, life, while it seems like it could always be rosy for the golden child, it may not always be. And finally, there is another potential downside in terms of what happens to the golden child. They may end up feeling more stuck and obligated in terms of needing to manage the narcissistic parent as they go into adulthood and older age. This can end up being a bit of a black or white thing. The entitled narcissistic golden child may just foist it onto the scapegoat the responsibilities of taking care of this aging narcissistic parent and just no longer deal with the narcissistic parent when they are no longer useful to them. And that unfortunate scapegoated child, now scapegoated adult, still has to hear the narcissistic parent singing the praises of the golden child, even though the scapegoat has to deal with the mess of managing the aging narcissistic parent. Now, the more psychologically anxious and perhaps the more sort of guilt-ridden golden child may be the type of golden child who may feel stuck in adulthood having to be the one who has to support the narcissistic parent. 
or in some cases, the golden child is the one kept on the hook because the narcissistic parent, especially if they have meaningful resources such as money, a house or houses or family business, may actually keep the golden child hooked through money and resources, making escape really difficult for the golden child. And the other siblings don't get access to the goodies, so it may be a lot easier for them to say, bye. Now, can anything good come out of this story in the golden child? Well, there's a small possibility that there's one version of the story that could really work out. The golden child does often have this experience of being special. And, you know, depending on how it's managed within the family, that can certainly build up self-esteem. And many times the golden child is often better resourced in a family than their siblings. So they may get, for example, better resources or early starts or anything like that in school, more support. They may get better access to experiences that are extracurricular or enhancing. And all of these may, and they may also, the parents may help the child become a great student or succeed in other ways that will benefit the golden child practically, at least when they become an adult. The balancing act then becomes to have a well-formed sense of self, but to keep it realistic, not be grandiose, and not buckle under the guilt if siblings were involved. And that alignment of the planets is pretty damn rare. Sometimes, rarely, but sometimes golden children may get the last laugh. They achieve what I call the gold standard of golden children. They, they would be, the golden child is raised like a thoroughbred with every resource poured into them and then may actually succeed and may then understand the toxicity of their narcissistic parent and then may use their success to also be there for their siblings and support and foster them. Now, that's a lot of thens, a lot of maybes, and a lot of conditions. But it's possible, in some cases, it could happen. And the stronger infrastructure building that's given, that resulted in that golden child, and the, the, maybe even a stronger start for the golden child, could result in them paying it forward to their other siblings. But it becomes really crucial that the golden child not enable or gas, not enable the narcissistic parent or gaslight their siblings or even their other parent, all of whom had very different childhoods and lives than the golden child did. It doesn't matter what your role is, from scapegoat to golden child to invisible child. Having a high conflict, antagonistic, entitled, narcissistic parent takes a tremendous toll on a person. Narcissistic parents manipulate, no matter what type the child is, and even for the golden children, who may be on the receiving side of a better situation, growing up in the midst of gaslighting, rage, manipulation, and invalidation, even if it's not happening directly to you, always takes a toll. Golden children, mm, it's not an easy role. Either they really go over to the dark side and really become, you know, frankly narcissistic, or they carry a legacy which people might have seen, especially people close to that family system, might has, have seen as being privileged and easy. But it's actually a heavy burden to bear. And oftentimes, it's not what the child asks for. For the golden child to cut the narcissistic parent off, or even ask them to do things differently when they're childhood, in childhood, it's a lot to ask of a child. Because that golden child will face the same wrath as anybody else who tells that narcissistic person no. The path to recovery, as it were, for the golden child is to advantage the gifts that they were given and pay it forward. Sadly, for a variety of reasons, that doesn't always happen. It's easy to romanticize the golden child and say they've always had an easier run. That's not always been the case. And for those of you who were golden children, feel free to drop down in the comments if any of this was consistent with your experience. Thanks again.